It was a pleasant enough day. But as is often the case with pleasant enough days, it was also a little bit boring. Yesterday, Chibiko had been looking forward to a day of doing nothing. But now, he was beginning to wish that he had made some plans. At least the summer sun would not set until late. And so Chibiko decided that maybe he could go for a walk and look for something to do. And so he opened his door, left his house, closed his door, and walked down the street. Chibiko walked for a bit and eventually found himself at the entrance to Button Park. Off in the distance, he could see what looked like different enticing candies standing up and decorating the grass. Candy, he thought to himself. I like candy. Cotton candy in particular. And so he walked towards the giant looking candies to see what was happening. As he got closer, Chibiko saw that what he had thought to be large candies weren't actually candies at all. Rather, they were a mix of different stalls and rides. That's right, Chibiko remembered. The town fair is very soon. They must be setting up and getting ready for it. Without even realizing it, Chibiko had wandered into the fair, even though it wasn't open yet. He started to feel nervous. Was he going to get into trouble? He decided that he should try and sneak away. But just as he turned around, he heard a voice. You there! Who are you? Chibiko froze in his tracks, suddenly very frightened. Turn around, the voice said. Chibiko did as he was told and turned around to see the carrot that was speaking to him. The carrot gave Chibiko a meatball. It was very yummy, and Chibiko said so. No sooner had he done this, however, than a stick of celery called him over. It wanted Chibiko to try its cheese sticks. They were also very good. Then a radish gave him some pizza to try. A tomato, some fried chicken, an aubergine, some mutton curry, and a spring onion had him try its pork adobo. All of it was scrumptious, and Chibiko was feeling quite full. Almost too full to eat. He was ready to tell the squash that he only had space left for fairy floss, but it turned out that the squash wanted Chibiko to try a spinning chair ride. Since he didn't have to eat anything, Chibiko agreed. The spinning chair ride was a lot of fun. It was almost like driving a race car and... Uh oh! Chibiko looked down and realized that he wasn't wearing his seat belt. Seconds later, he went flying from his chair and landed in a kind of metal bin filled with tiny pink crystals. At first, Chibiko thought his head was spinning. But then he realized that it was the bin that was spinning. And he was in it. The pink crystals seemed to turn into clouds around him. And when the spinning eventually stopped, he was covered in a huge ball of cotton candy. Oops, sorry about that, said the broccoli that had been manning the cotton candy cart. No problem, Chibiko replied. I love cotton candy. And with that, Chibiko ate all of the cotton candy that was covering him and, since he was now quite sticky, decided to go home to take a shower. He felt a little bit sick, but he was very happy.
Chibiko woke up feeling excited. This was because he had dreamed that he was surfing. In his dream, he was very good at it. He had a cool moustache, wore cool sunglasses, and he rode big waves and did cool tricks with whales and dolphins. He thought about surfing as he took a shower. He thought about surfing as he ate some eggs for breakfast. He was still thinking about surfing while he was brushing his teeth. Eventually, Chibiko decided that he should go to the beach. It was a lovely, warm day after all. And so, he left his house, got on the bus, and rode to Bear Bells Beach. Luckily for Chibiko, it was still nice and sunny when he got to the beach. But it also wasn't very crowded. Chibiko put on some sunscreen and then went over to the small set of shops to borrow a surfboard. While he had dreamed of surfing like a pro, since this would be his first time to try surfing for real, the woman at the store also gave Chibiko some floaties to wear while he was in the water. Chibiko said thanks and then rushed out in such excitement that he almost toppled over someone's sandcastle. Oops, sorry, Chibiko said. It's okay, please just be careful, said the children who were working on what was looking like it would become a very big sandcastle by the end of the day. Are you going surfing? Yup, Chibiko said his voice bubbling with pride and excitement. That's so cool, one of the kids replied. Surfing looks like fun, but also kind of scary. Are you good at surfing? Another kid asked. I don't know, Chibiko said. This is my first time. Good luck, the kids all said together. Let us know how hard it is. Chibiko waved to the kids as he ran off to the water. Ah! He thought once he reached it. It's cold! After a couple of minutes, he got used to the water's temperature and so waded out deeper and climbed onto his surfboard. He rolled off two seconds later. Splash! Surfing in real life was much harder than it had been in his dream. Chibiko climbed back on and tried to stand up. A wave came and flipped him headfirst into the water. Splash! Chibiko climbed on again, and this time held on tight to his surfboard. Many waves came and splashed him around but he didn't let go. He wondered if he looked silly, but at least he was having fun. Soon, Chibiko's arms got tired just as a big wave was coming. It threw him and his surfboard so far that he almost landed on the sand. He decided that it was time to return the surfboard and ride the bus back home for dinner. He picked up his board and walked back to the store, past the children who had now built a massive, spectacular sandcastle. How is surfing? They all asked at once. It's pretty difficult, Chibiko told them. But I did get this cool moustache, he said, pointing to the seaweed that had become stuck to his face. Chibiko woke up feeling very excited. He rushed through his morning shower, ate a healthy breakfast of hot oats with banana, and brushed his teeth so quickly that he got toothpaste all over his face. Then he went out and walked to Button Park. There were lots of people at the park doing different things. 
some children were flying kites, others were having a picnic. Some of the bigger kids were hanging upside down from the monkey bars. But this wasn't what Chibiko was here for today. Today, he was at the park to play soccer. He walked to an open stretch of grass with goalposts at each side and introduced himself. Today's game would be between Team Grapefruit and Team Banana Split. He was told that he would be playing for Team Banana Split and handed his uniform with the number 7 on it. Chibiko walked onto the field with his teammates and then went to put his yellow jersey on. He still had it over his head when the whistle blew. Chibiko heard the soccer ball fly over him and then the sound of his teammates running and shouting but his jersey was stuck. He couldn't see! He heard the ball again, followed by a rush of busy feet. It sounded like everyone was having fun. Chibiko tugged and tugged and tugged at his singlet, but it wouldn't come down over his face. The ball whooshed past again, and a member of Team Grapefruit nearly ran straight into Chibiko. This time, he pulled and pulled and pulled up on his singlet, but he couldn't pull it off either. Again, Chibiko heard the ball zoom past him, followed by the footsteps of his teammates. Well, I guess I'll have to just do my best, he thought to himself and ran after the sound of the ball. Playing soccer without being able to see was very hard, but Chibiko ran up and down the field, doing his best to follow everyone and to help his team. There was a cheer from the Grapefruit team. They had scored a goal. Chibiko was worried for his team, but soon after, there was a cheer from Team Banana Split as well. They had also scored a goal. The game was tied. Both teams had one goal each. Chibiko was getting very tired, and he still had his shirt blocking his eyes, but he continued to run after the ball. Then a whistle blew. Chibiko had been told before the game that the late whistle would mean that there was only a little bit of time left. But the whistle was so loud that Chibiko couldn't hear where the ball was, and so all he could do was stay still and listen as hard as he could. Shh. Suddenly, Chibiko felt a hard thwack against his head. He had been hit by the soccer ball. It really hurt, but as it bounced away again, he heard the Banana Split team cheering. The ball had bounced off of Chibiko's noggin and into the goal. He had won the game. All of his teammates came around to congratulate him. Soccer is pretty fun, Chibiko thought. Even when things go wrong, they can still go right. It was a nice day. The sun was out and the air was crisp. This was perfect for Chibiko as he had decided that today he would go hiking in the mountains near his house. He ate a healthy breakfast of different fruits and then packed his bag, making sure to include a few snacks for energy, as well as a bottle of water, as it was important not to get too thirsty when you go hiking. Then. He slept on some sunscreen, went outside and rode the bus to the foot of the nearest mountain. It was much bigger than he had expected up close. 
This hike might take all day. Well, no time to waste then, Chibiko thought. And so he started to walk up the mountain path. Soon he was sweating, even though the weather wasn't hot. Wow, hiking can be tough! Luckily, the higher he got, the more trees there were, so he could keep out of the sun. But then suddenly, he ran into a tree snake. Hiss! Oh no, um, I, I have a, a, a chocolate bar! Chibiko said as he pulled the treat from his backpack. The snake looked at the chocolate bar, sniffed it, and then smiled. Whew! Safe! Chibiko continued to hike up the mountain. But a few minutes later, he bumped into a bear. Growl. Oh no, um, I, I, I have a, I, I have, I, I have this tuna sandwich, Chibiko said as he pulled his lunch out from his backpack. The bear looked at the sandwich and examined it closely. It smiled. Whew, safe again. Chibiko continued to hike up the mountain path. A couple of scares aside, it had been quite a pleasant day, and Chibiko was sure that he was getting some good exercise, as well as some nice fresh air. Suddenly, a gorilla appeared in front of him. It beat its chest. Thump! 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 Oh no! Um, I, I have, I have a, a... Chibiko frantically searched the contents of his backpack. I have... This box of animal crackers! The gorilla took the box and opened it. It looked very closely as it pulled out its first cracker. It was a monkey animal cracker. Oh no, the gorilla is very angry. Quick, run down the hill! Chibiko ran as fast as he could. Bye bear! Bye snake! Ah! The gorilla was still behind him. Quick, to the bus stop, wait for the bus, get on the bus, pay your fare, ride the bus! Dun -dun 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 Chibiko checked the window before getting off the bus. Whew! Safe. He thanked the driver, got off, went home and opened the fridge so that he could cool down with a nice glass of orange juice. Well, that was exciting, he thought to himself. I wonder if I should stay inside tomorrow. One morning, Chibiko woke up with a thirst for adventure. Somehow, he felt braver than he had other days, and as he ate his breakfast, he thought about what he should do with this day. Watch TV? No, he wanted to do something exciting himself, not watch other people do such things. Maybe play video games? No, still not good enough. Then, his phone rang. Hello, Chibiko answered. Hi Chibiko, it's Danny. I'm going to Ninja Hot Dog Land in a bit. Would you like to go with me? So, Danny was going to the new Ninja Hot Dog theme park. Chibiko smiled. A theme park, that was perfect. Sure, he said. Let's go on lots of scary rides. Uh, okay, Danny said nervously. There's a bus leaving in a few minutes. I'll see you there then? 
Sure thing, Chibiko said. He hung up his phone and went out to meet his friend so that they could go to Ninja Hot Dog Land together. After arriving, they bought their tickets and went through the gate, which was actually the arm of the yellow Ninja Hot Dog. Chibiko looked at the map while Danny went to get them some caramel popcorn and churros. There was a ring toss, some bumper cars, something where you sat down and watched a virtual reality movie, there was also a swing set that spun around by itself, and a roller coaster. Here you go! Danny had returned with their snacks. Chibiko took his popcorn, and they walked and munched together. Yum, yum, yum! Danny said while eating three churros at once. So, what are we riding first? The roller coaster! Chibiko exclaimed with so much energy that he threw his popcorn everywhere. Oh, cool. Cool, 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 Danny said. Here we are, Chibiko said, and the line is very short. How lucky! The roller coaster was huge. It even had five loop the loops. Yeah, Danny said. L lucky! It was soon their turn, and Chibiko climbed into the roller coaster and pulled down his protector. Are you ready, buddy? Chibiko said. Danny? Chibiko couldn't find his friend. Where's Danny? Is he down here? No? Behind me! Uh, maybe to my left? Boy, he's really good at hiding. Maybe he's under the seat. But that would be a dangerous place to say. Danny, where are you? Right here, Danny said. He was standing right beside Chibiko. Oh, Chibiko said. I thought I had looked there already. Are you ready? The ride must be about to start. What do you mean, Danny said. I got scared and didn't go on. You've already ridden it. Really? Chibiko asked. He wondered how many other people had ridden a roller coaster without even noticing it. He supposed that explained why his tummy felt a little bit like it was upside down. You're pretty brave, Danny said. But can we maybe just go and play the ring toss game now? Sure, Chibiko said, remembering that it was important to also do what his friends wanted to do. So long as we can go past the toilets on the way there. <laughs>